All right, we're back. First, I better check the Monokuma file. The victims were Hifumi Yamada and Kiyotaka, ah, Kiya, Kiyotaka, Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death for each was a blow to the head. It is thought that they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it? Very yeah, that's pretty strange. We got way less information this time than before. <sighs> That is no problem. After all, the events of this has been unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Monokuma file code anyways. Hmm. Maybe. Well. There's something else that's bothering me. Hmm. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are you talking about Kyoko? Perhaps. Without a doubt, she has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? <laughs> an accomplice? Now, according to the rules, from what I remember, having an accomplice in a murder will not ha help the accomplice whatsoever. But if two of them murder two other different people, that could probably do something? Maybe? Or maybe they had to murder each other in the, in the end once they get blackened or something. That's something that's really confusing to me, but I guess the game will progress later on and... Improve on its rule system or something. Anyways, an accomplice? What are you doing here? Don't be rude. I'm here to answer your questions. Oh my god, I'm getting a raspy voice every time I voice Monokuma. You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I, during the first class trial? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask. And so I shall answer! Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate! Now, the thing is, what if both of them does the killing? So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Unless both of them kill someone. That's really my only explanation right here. Words. So basically, you can be an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then. So are you saying nobody worked together this time either? Hey, um... Sorry, can't answer that. It would be a... obstruct the free exchange and information between you guys. I just want to make sure you guys don't forget, no matter how much you might, might assist in the murder, Phew. only one blacken can gradu graduate. An accomplice gets nothing. Now, of course, if two people murder, so. In that context of the text, then I'm assuming if two people murder each other, I guess the rules continue can go on until one murders the other. That's the only way one person can get out because only one blacken can be graduated. So in other that's my words, guess. Then we only need to figure out who that one blacken is that did the killing, right? Just like normal. Well. Okay, okay. Let me take this opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In this class trial, what you need to determine is Extreme! the one true Blacken who devised the murder plot. Okay, now that would actually make sense, actually, which could possibly make Kyoko a little bit more suspicious because if two people murder someone, only the one who devises the plot is the true Blacken one. So despite murdering, despite two people murdering someone, only the one that devised the plan can be mur can be um graduated. All right, I got it. The true blacken. So just one person. Well now. That's enough for explain. Fine. Goddamn Monokuma. Now it's time. It's down to the final battle between all of you and the blacken. Good luck with all the contestants. Okay. Okay. All right. This is a lot of information to process, and thank God, I doing this all in one segment. Hopefully, I could finish the trial before class begins because I got class in about three hours, and hopefully, I could finish it before then. Anyways. Then I can't see any way Kyoko could be connected to this case after all. Ex Again, you had to take the words of Monokuma to really decipher it. Maybe Byakuya is gonna bitch at me again for not understanding the rule sets or something. Who knows? <laughs> you may be right. Um... If that's true then, Kyoko, where are you? However... As long as she's not connected to the case, it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. Indeed. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue, uh, pursue further information. So, um... You know, don't you think we should consider a certain someone a suspect just in case? I'm talking about the murderous fiend, Genocide Jack. <laughs> what? 
What? I'm offended. By the way, how the fuck did you know that we're here? Yeah. You. When did you? I've been looking all over for you, master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found. Anyway, you there, milk sack swimmer girl. M milk sack? Why do I gotta be a suspect? Well, maybe it's because of your personality, just in case. Now, it's possible that you may have not murdered- Well, then again, do we have a alibis here? What the fuck do you think, Byakuya? And I think Soccer was with them as well? I don't remember. I think those two. It might be someone else. I, I remember Celeste, me, and Aoi was with, uh, with Hifumi. So that means at least Sakura and uh, Byakuya have some sort of alibis to justify Genocide Jill. What the heck? Well, I mean, you are a serial killer, yes, but just because they're a serial killer doesn't mean they kill all the time. That's just a stereotype, right? What the fuck? So what? I'm like a special guest suspect every time? I have an alibi, you know. Hmm. Okay, so that proves her innocence then. She's right about that. When we heard Ifumi scream, she was with me. And when the bodies disappeared, she was trying was still lying down unconscious in the equipment room. Plus, Taka's body aside, I can't imagine any way she would have been able to move Ifumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculated every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone when everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they don't actually call me the murderous fiend for nothing. What are you saying? That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about. Let's see. On another topic, should we post a guard by the bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. So then. Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Hmm. Sure, I'd be totally useless on the investigation anyway. It's all clear now. And that's the case. Let's begin. Alright. This whole thing is so strange. All but one of us has an alibi, so figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? But maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as it seems. Monokuma file number three has been added to the truth bullet section on your handbook. All right, what's that evidence? Is that proving um, an alibi for Genocide Jill? Oh, that's just- okay, never mind. I thought it was updated, but it's just the same shit. Okay, let's inspect the dead bodies, see if there's anything worthwhile to work around with. Fumi's big, cold body is laying down on the floor. His really big body. Dude, don't make jokes on a dead body. He died. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to- That- actually, no, never mind. That's a good point, actually. So, in order for the killer to be- the killer has to be able to be very strong in order to move the dead body. Which I could imagine Hiro doing. Maybe... Maybe Kyoko as well? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to here in the repository. All the way from the first floor to the third, all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good. I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish this game Ifumi. Alright. Anyways, if I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was lying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh? Wait, something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. Let's see here. Alright, so from the portrait of what I'm seeing, all I'm seeing is a blunt to the head. And I see like a red object next to his eye as well, or goggles I assume, but that might just be a backpack strap or something. Alright, what's going on here? That's it, his glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. Okay. But now they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? And if so, what's... why do that? But who would do that and why? Okay, so I guess that helps. Hifumi's glasses and his big fucking body. Those are two evidences we can find for Hifumi's uh, lifeless corpse. Now for Taka. What can we figure out for him? Taka. He'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. We found Justice Hammer 4 near his body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a trap laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? He could use 
That could be something. He could have used one of those stretcher things in order to move their bodies. So that way, there wouldn't be any blood left behind while the body was moved. Okay, blue tarp was added to the blue, uh, truth bullet. Okay, that's interesting. He has a blue tarp, but not Hifumi. So I'm guessing... Actually, no. It's very easy to carry Taka's body with a blue tarp, so... That would be too... Logical for anyone to be suspect of that murder. Uh, actually, just in case, let me see everyone's bi biography right now. Do they explain, like, their weights and heights? Chest, weight... It doesn't really determine their strength level. What the fuck? Makoto's 5... Dude, you are tiny. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so, Hifumi is... 5'7", 107... Okay. He's 342 pounds, so... That's a big fucking body. So either someone is really strong, or they somehow had another method of carrying his uh, his dead body. Um, that's a hero. Is he pretty strong? He's tall. 157 pounds. Where's Kyoko? 5'6". Like, I know he's very- she's probably acrobatic, but I'm not sure about the strength difference between her. So, we can't really suspect her about moving- well, let's not- uh, let's not dig deep into that for now. What do you guys have to say about this? Hmm. There are many aspects to the incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Concerning that, it might be a good- it might be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then... Would you like my help? Uh, sure. Alright. Take a look on back things. This morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to go look for them. Hmm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search, and soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Mm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came and got you and me. O according to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Alright. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. This could also prove our case as well because Yasuhiro is a tall man, and as a tall man, he could easily fit into that costume, and he's also taller than Hifumi. So, whoever this strange individual is, is taller than Hifumi without a doubt. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discover her attacker. So again, all the evidence so far is just proving Hifumi killed- uh, Sorry, sorry. Yasuhiro killed Hifumi, but nothing about Taka whatsoever. So we already solved his, uh, Hifumi's murder case, but Taka on the other hand? That's something we really need to figure out. Anyways, based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robojustice. It also became clear that Robojustice had dragged Hifumi away. Alright. After meeting up with Toka and Byakuya, we began searching for the cost co costumed assailant. We found an injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... What's wrong? I, I saw the shadow, something moving around at the top of the stairs. Okay. Based on Celeste's claim, we went back to the second floor where we split up and began searching. Then right after that, Celeste screamed. This time, she had apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down into the hallway and disappeared. Mm. And then... Ah! Huh? Oh, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have... Okay, so Celeste definitely has some sort of witness account as well. That came from downstairs. It must have been... Hifumi! He's in the nurse... Oh, sorry. Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that, at that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you, Byakuya, and Toko pursued the suspect on the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discoverment announcement play. 
I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. However... But at the same time, we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. Which means Hifumi and Taka bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement right play right after finding Taka. Alright. And that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi, Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you, me, and Byakuya all headed to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left in the physics lab- Jesus fuck, this is one convoluted trial! We ran into C Celeste, who just arrived to tell us something very unusual. God damn, Celeste, what the hell is with your witnesses account? Hifumi's body has disappeared! We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that his corpse was in fact gone. Then we, we remembered we had abandoned the unconscious Tolko and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? This time, Taka's body had disappeared. So, from there, we began our search for both the missing bodies. And after some time, Celeste told us she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository. And there we did rediscovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. Okay. And that brings us up to now. However, Looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back to the case again, just let me know. I'm fine with any time. What? That's not gonna be impo- Okay, so that was just a waste of time. I guess I, I guess I'm, I know uh, reviewing this time, so... Celeste has been awfully very vocal about this, so I'm kind of suspicious as her as well. Uh, in the meantime, I guess. Byakuya, do you think Hiro did, really did it? I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders are all dis and disappears all happen, every one, every one of us had an alibi. And the last thing Yifumi said when he died, yeah, he said Hiro's so name. Other words. Then there's no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe you thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered? Because he's the fool of the century, you see. He is kinda dumb. But do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. And is that it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? <laughs> they probably figured that it would... If we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the but if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back forward to the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is why they bother killing two people. What? What? Because all the rules say say if you kill someone and get away with it, you graduate. Wait, right, right with that. So if you're the killer, the number one priority is not getting caught. Caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get find out. Hold on. Perhaps. I see, so that's what that means. Is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me if as if we're friends! Huh? What's with that attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have something fun with this after all. Fuck me! <laughs> His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figure something out. But if he did, would it, uh, would it have killed him to tell me what it was? No, I think he just wants this interesting as as much as possible. Where the fuck, Celeste? God damn it, I'm gonna have to- Alright. Alright, uh, Howie, what do you have to say? So, um... Hey, um, Makoto, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh? What is it? Hmm. After he- WAIT A FUCKING MINUTE! THE HAMMERS! Oh shit! They're- Some of them are missing, so- Okay. So we now know where the hammers are from. Anyways. After Hifumi and Taka's bodies disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. What? We came around to the repository to, you know, look around. But when we got there, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. That's what I was thinking as well. It was locked? Hmm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true, then who locked it? And why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. 
There might be some secret lurking in there. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Alright, well first off, I'm searching for these hammers. They look awfully suspicious. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall, although some of them are more like mallets. Mallets? Could the Justice Hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers have been obviously seen of a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's all wet. Did someone wash it recently? Spotless hammer had been added to the... Okay, that is interesting. Alright then. We need to search for that hammer, specifically. So maybe we could back, go back to four of the crime scenes with four of the hammers, because it looks like only three hammers are missing. So I'm assuming this one's the biggest hammer, or the second biggest hammer. Let's search around either... So I'm guessing it's either... Um, yeah, the tiny hammers, we don't have to worry about that, but... Hammer number four, hammer number three, that's definitely suspicious, so... Let's search around that. Actually, let's check on the map to see where everyone is right uh, doesn't look like everyone... Okay. Is this Byakuya, or is it Celeste? Celeste is at the nurse's office, so maybe she's investigating some there as well. And Byakuya... Well, okay. Okay, that totally helps. So Byakuya is nowhere to be seen right now. Because we're on the third floor right now, I think it's best to search around... Shit, I accidentally pressed... Okay. How to get out of here again? Circle, right. Definitely a lock, but we can't blah, blah, blah. Okay. I don't see why it's locked from the art room. Hmm. The door can only be locked from the inside repository, which makes me wonder. He and Sakura confirmed that the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door was designed so that it could only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when he had checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims that there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So that sort of someone... ...is still in here? Let me review that just, ca just in case. Wait a minute. The door is connected to the art room and the repository is designed to only open from the repository side. According to Aoi, it was locked during the search for the missing body. However, the body was rediscovered that somehow been unlocked. Celeste is just getting a lot of suspicion right now, so she might be an accomplice as well. But in any case, let's search if there's anything, anyone that's hiding around here or something, like behind those wooden panels. Alright. It's a dolly, it doesn't even have a handle. I saw this in the art room before, I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. But, but wait. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? Was it? I didn't see anything. Is that it? That looks very two-dimensional. Oh, someone has to work in the graphics department in this game. And look at the wheels. There's a blood stain on it. Oh shit, hello. So there's a lot more to investigate in this area as well. So there's blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved to the equipment room? To the repository? What's the explanation for that? Alright, that could be something then. Hmm, there's gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places- okay. So I guess I'm done here then, huh? Never mind. <laughs> Alright, leave the repository? Alright. So we're in the third floor right now, so uh, the only smart decision right now is to search whatever's around. Um, uh, where Taka is. Sorry, not Taka. Uh, Toko is. Where's that place again? It's here, right? Yeah, here it is. Okay. So, let's investigate and hopefully it's not fucking Genocide Jill. Although, it's been 24 hours. Sorry, 24 minutes. So, we'll be right back with the next episode of Danganronpa. Stay tuned.